Welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is March the 31st, 2022. And the topic for this evening is DNA. So throughout, all throughout March, I've been talking about the evolution of humanity on earth. And uh, I talked about all of our um, DNA contributors, like all, all the different star races that has um, contributed to our DNA. And also talked about the, um, all the different star races that have been involved in the evolution of humanities consciousness have talked about the characteristics of the dimensions how creation um, or, or one version of how creation came about and also why why do we have all these different dimensions and all of these uh, and and all the things that are relevant um, for for us to understand the evolution of consciousness on earth. And I know right now that not everybody or, or at least most people on earth, most being more than 50%, all of, of this talk about, you know, star races, extraterrestrials beings, all of these different species that have been involved on earth seemed something that is so far-fetched or even irrelevant. But I, I still chose to talk about all of these things for a few reasons. Um, of course, one of the, the, the best reason is that, that um, there is no timeline on earth currently that does not involve human beings becoming more entangled with um, other species that are off planet, or, or actually some of them have been on um, planet for a long time. They, and they have been, some of them actually have been living amongst us that looked very much like us, or that they may not be living with us, like not, not like our neighbors, but they are living on earth. They may be in underground cities or they may be in really remote part of, of earth that we don't usually get to mingle with them. So, but the, the thing is all the timelines, like the, um, I'm talking about that there are two stable timelines on earth right now. There's one timeline that is more harmonious and then there is one that is, um, shall I say, more interesting. Um, and some people have called the more harmonious one the, the fifth dimension timeline. And then the, the more interesting one or the, the more colorful one is the, the, the third dimension timeline. So, and, and so for both of those timelines, the, we would at some point be either meeting our star brothers and sisters face to face or in some other way starting to cooperate and um, like openly cooperate because parts of our civilization, parts, parts of our government have been working with all of these, um, well, not all of them, but some um, off planet races for at least decades now. So at least since like um, since around the, the the 1940s now, since around the, the, the Second World War or just before Second World War. So it's at least has have been like 50, 60 years now there's been um, work working between different governments on earth with ET races. So that's been going on. However, that's just a fraction of the um, of people on Earth that has that experience. Most of us, um, regular folks, let's say regular folks, 
that um, we we don't get involved. We don't actually know. Maybe we have met um, and somebody from a different species, but usually we would not know that we have encountered them because they have um, the very overtly decided that we are such a we're such an undeveloped um, species of people. I'm talking about human beings. We actually are quite a violent race of people. We tend to um, ostracize or hit, damage, or even kill things that or, or beings, not even like foreign looking beings, but even human beings, even human beings from a different part of the planet, if we see them, we usually suspect them, we don't like them very much. <coughs> and a lot of the times we are hostile towards them until we get used to them. So we, we are very fear based. So far, we are, we are very fear based. Um, um, species of of people on Earth. So that's why most extraterrestrials, even when they um, look enough like us, they they would do their best to fit in, whether they have um, cloaking device or or whether it's um, um, mentally controlling other people, so that you know even though they may not have any particular, they may be looking the way they look or they, they may look like a reptilian or whatever, but in our eyes, in our mind, they're able to um, use mind control so that in our mind, we still manage to see the projected image as being human-like looking enough that we will not feel um, anything wrong with that. So that's been going on. And that's one of the reasons why I want to talk about this is that extraterrestrials, we have, they have been with us like tens of thousands of years ago. They, they actually live with us, we, they cohabitate with us. Um, they actually even have uh, relationships with our with um, our men and women, and we that's how we got their DNA within us. Is that we intermarry, we in we have in relationships with them. So they they're not um, so they have all they have been in our development for a long time, if, and it's only the last. 10, 15,000 years that um, they have kind of stepped back. They've like kind of taken a back seat in order for us to develop more on our own. However, they have still been around mm -hmm. to guide us. Maybe not overtly, <clears throat> but covertly. They have been guiding us all along and that as we get to the point where our consciousness is at the, the place, at the time and space where it's, we are able to, if not accept wholeheartedly, at least starting to comprehend, starting to be able to um, be, what's the word I'm looking for? Starting to be, um, to get used to the idea that maybe they can come around and live amongst us again, not as not this as disguised um, human beings, but actually as who they actually look like and be themselves. And still, we would feel. Um, well enough, adjusted well enough to, to not 
feel that we have to somehow harm them or be harmed by them in any way. So that is really the timeline that we are on. And, and both the 3D and the 5D timelines, both have the um, different races being with us at some point in the, in the future. Actually, not very far future. Um, and so does that mean that we are being forced to, to have these, to have them amongst us again? No, there's no such thing as force. It's just that the people, like we still have free will. So however, the, the people that actually have um, no interest whatsoever to be living on earth with um, ET races, those people have actually left our timeline because there, there are some human beings that within their soul, they chose not to have that experience. And those people have actually left our timeline. We are not in the same timeline and they have actually chose to keep um, being isolated and also their, their um, evolution of their consciousness to, to have a, a ceiling so that the ceiling is that they don't want to um, know that there are other races because all the other extraterrestrial races, why are they here? Why are they, why is it that they, that within our timeline and, and most likely within our lifetime as well, that we'll be seeing them walking amongst us again peacefully and coexisting with us again, co-creating with us again. That's because that's the way that it is. It has been in the universe. In these different species from other different planets. That's how the universe work. Um, so more advanced um, civilizations will actually go to a, another planet that is just developing or about to be developing to assist the, the next um, planet to assist their, the evolution of their consciousness. That is how it's always been done. And in time, when our own consciousness get to the point where we start to be able to go to other planets and, and play that role, for another developing planet. That is the role that one day we will take up ourselves as well. When that's going to be, I don't know. I just know that that is how it is. A planet, um, uh, um, a species will develop to the more advanced and have um, more knowledge or better knowledge of why they are, why they are alive. Mm meaning that they know why they are being created and they know about all the um, dimensions and the, the reasons why we need to have different dimensions and that um, we are actually create a source trying to know itself and trying to find out what it is. Um, create a source wanting to know what itself is capable of being and doing. So that's what it is that we do. And this, um, and the reason why for the last 10, 15,000 years, humanity has been completely or mostly cut off from this knowledge is, is actually, um, it's simply because of the what happened in um, Atlantis, there was because of the, the fall of Atlantis and it's the fall of Atlantis is actually not just a fall of a civilization, it's actually um, a fall of consciousness as well because during Atlantis time, at one time, the consciousness of human beings within that civilization was like in terms of consciousness, it's about the same as we are now, maybe even 
more advanced, slightly more advanced. However, because of um, different cataclysmic events that caused the fall of Atlantis is actually reset um, the consciousness of the people on earth to the point where we have to start from pretty much the stone age onwards. And, and so that happened. And somewhere along the way, um, some of the, the beings that uh, have kind of decided that they want to, to keep certain knowledge to be only available for a fraction of the population and the rest of the population just um, would go about their, their life without knowing all of these more esoteric and, and, and special knowledge about dimensions, um, all of these things. So that's, that's what happened on earth. Um, let's see. So I talked about the two timelines. Um, oh, okay. Let me let me finish the thought on why I wanted to talk about our ET background. It's because we are on this timeline that the the star races would be coming back to to um, co-create with us at some point. So that's why I want to talk to all of you about this. Not to say that, you know, yeah, um, I'm not even trying to, to say that what I've presented is actually what happened because there, there have been many different versions. There have been many different timelines. Um, you have to understand that we talked about that um, Earth is, is really an experiment from the, the point of view of the six dimensional beings. Earth is an experiment. And so as in with experiment is that some, some of the experiments failed and some of the experiments are more successive. So they, you may have heard of, or um, at some point you may actually remember it from within yourself. There may be things that are different from what I told you in the previous um, weeks as well. It's not to say that you're wrong or that I am wrong. It's, it's to say that is actually there are many timelines and on each timelines, um, not every timeline, everything it happened exactly the same. The, the reasons why there are different timelines is because some things are changed. So depending on which timeline you come from, at some point you may, when you are, when you really want to start to look within and find the Akashic record um, stories of what uh, of your lifetimes in in different whether it was in uh, Mu, Lemuria, Atlantis, or even before that, or other um, other timelines or different timelines, is so that you may remember something a little different. However, the my understanding is that that's the way timeline works is that the successful timelines, meaning that, that successful, meaning that not that it's the best, but somehow the, the, the beings within all that timeline was able to progress and find solutions to their own problems. Um, so that's successful. So sometimes some, some, some of the timelines they have um, done things, made decisions in their own lifetimes, um, 
both through many over many lifetimes, that somehow it caused the the destruction of their version of Earth or their version of their civilization, and because they caused that destruction, so they didn't survive. So what Earth has done, or, or what has been done, is that the failed timelines would somehow become the the memories become more more um, convoluted, corrupted. So only the successful timelines would remain. And right now on Earth, there are two timelines, uh, as I've mentioned, the 5D timelines and the 3D timelines. Right now, there are two of them. Um, and there have been many other lifetime, many other timelines that has fell off, that just um, for whatever reason, they are no longer supported on Earth. And um, and so the disclosure of all of the, the our star heritage is going to be something that we will learn within or get exposed to more within our lifetimes. So I just want to talk about all of this to give you some sort of a grounding so that when how is this disclosure going to be um, come about? Um, it could be from official um, announcements. It could be. I think um, that is a lot of the different um, governments have started to, if not officially come out, say they, they at least um, released a lot of um, video footages or um, they that that all of that is actually starting to come out. I think probably um, even with um, even with the USA they they've talked about establishing a um, in a, a, a kind of um, star exploration arm of the of them as well. So I think, so all of that, why, why are they doing that? It's actually, if you read into it, if you read in between the line, it's really their way of saying that they, they acknowledge that there are other beings out there on other planets. Otherwise, you know, why would they have this? If there's nothing out there, then, um, you know, why is there all of a sudden an interest to go out there and explore? Because there is something out there. That's why we want to go out and start to say hello to the, those different um, species. So this is really my, my main reasons and, and logic for talking about all of this. And if whatever it is that I've talked about resonate with you then, okay? So then take what resonates and let the rest go. And the other thing I want to circle back um, to talk about is really the two timelines that is currently on earth, the 5D timeline and the 3D timeline. The intent is that eventually there will only be one timeline, the, the 5D timeline. So um, which timeline are you on? Um, I know it seems like everybody wants to go on the 5D timeline because we all think, oh, fifth dimension, you know, you, you have so much more power. Uh, everything is going to go smooth. Um, however, I just want you to, to all to, to let you know that there is no, there's no test. There is no one that's going to stop you from going to either timeline. You are the, you yourself um, is the only person that can decide which timeline you want to go to. If you want to go to the fifth dimension timeline, absolutely, you can go there. Um, 
However, you, I just want you to know that the, the, the 5D timeline also Im means that you would lose some of your individuality, let's say. Um, not all of it, but some of it, because in the 5D timeline, it's about unity. So you still have your own preference, but the emphasis is really on unity. So you, if you ask yourself this question, what are you willing to give up in order to be in the 5D timeline? If you are one of those person that um, really wants what you want and you're willing to do whatever it is that you can do in order to get it, then maybe the 5D timeline is not for you because um, when you go to the 5D timeline, um, you, because part of the underlying is that it's more harmonious. So, which means you have to, to compromise some of what you want so that you can live with everyone else to be in this unity consciousness. So that's what is the, the, the difference between the 5D and the 3D. 3D is from the point of view of a Um, of evolution is actually not a bad thing because we as a being come here to experiment. We come here to live out what it is that we want. So we, we set our goal on something and we go after it. We may or may not get it, but um, that's part of the experience. And so that really encapsulates what the, the, the 3D um, timeline is about. Yes, it's more bumpy because we want what we want. And we, um, of course, we don't always get what we want. That's why there is more bumpiness going on. So that's what the, that's the experience of 3D. So you have to really ask yourself which, which timeline do you want to be on and um, conduct your life accordingly. So that's all I want to talk about in, the, um, in terms of the two timelines. And now I want to actually circle back on the our DNA ancestors. I have mentioned um, at the beginning that we have all of these different star races that have been walking amongst us, living amongst us, co-creating with us, cohabiting with us for a good part of our development, uh, of the development of consciousness on earth. And that within our DNA, we actually have their part of their DNA as well. So I want that's actually a good segue for me to start talking about. So what does that mean? Um, so what does it mean um, practically on a practical level? What does that mean? We have like all of these different um, star families. DNA within us. So what, what does that mean? What can we do with it? So I want to talk a little bit about what is DNA. So our DNA is actually nothing short of miraculous. And um, if you think of it, that some of our DNA ancestors, some of the, the the star races that have contributed to our DNA, they, they are actually, they have lived millions and billions of years 
ahead of us in terms of the evolution of their consciousness and their DNA is in us as well. So what's in the DNA? Um, the DNA, there are, there are biological layers of the DNA, which when we look at, that's, that's really the, the layer sense chemical and we can look at it um, under a microscope within with the, the the instruments that we have right now we we can look at it we can see it we can actually see it and then there are multi-dimensional layers within our DNA that cannot be observed with the instruments that we have right now so that's why um, the at the uh, I would say at the the outset of a lot of scientists who started to look at the, our DNA started to, and they say that there are, you know, 95% of our DNA are uh, just junk DNA. The thing is, they cannot see it and they don't understand it. And they, that's why they call it junk. Junk does not mean that it's not there. Junk does not mean that it's not useful. Chunk simply means that they have no idea what to call it. So they call it junk. So I draw my information from the channelings of Cryon. Cryon actually wrote a book called the, the 12 Layers of DNA. And you can actually go to Amazon or maybe even um, the chapters in Indigo in, in uh, Toronto or, or anywhere within Canada to order that book. And it's called The 12 Layers of DNA. And um, Cryon told us about, described to us that there are 12 layers of DNA. And, and when, so I, I um, have, have the book and I also took a workshop with Cryon and he, uh, to, to learn about all the 12 layers of DNA. Now, I'm not going to go through each one of those layers. I'm just going to, in a very, very quick summary about those 12 layers of DNA. And yes, the cryon, when cryon talked about it, we talked about it as 12 layers, but that does not mean that they are actual layers that you can, you know, at some point that we would be able to have the, the kind of multidimensional um, instruments that would be able to see 12 layers. No, he, he used the term 12 layers simply as a, a device to explain what's within our DNA. However, there, um, all of these all of the 12 layers of DNA are actually all wrapped up together and cannot be separated from one another. And so there are biological layers of our DNA, which is the, the chemical layers that we can see. And then within it, there are multidimensional layers. Um, one of the layers he talked about is our life lessons layer. Um, and that's where we stored within our DNA, the, um, the life lessons that we come here to experiment, explore, because we, as, um, as six dimensional beings, we design what each lifetime is what we are here to um, experience and to learn. So, so that's where our life lessons. So that's kind of where the each life plan, planning what to experience, what we want to experience, what we want to learn, and all those things. So that's one of the layers. And then there are also layers within it that's all about the teachings from. Um, the Lemurian star mothers, um, the Pleiadian star mothers. It's because the Mu or Lemuria um, is such a 
is really one of the first major civilization on, on earth. So that's why it has such a profound um, influence within our DNA. The, the star mothers um, within Mu or Lemuria, what they, they know that is, is the first time that humanity is experiencing something that is as major as the development of a, uh, a unique civilization, a unique culture. And that's part of the um, star mothers intent is to really kind of do a, a, a a consciousness dump, meaning to download into the, the human beings all of the most significant things that we need to know about what it means to be a human being on earth and all talking all about the, our connection to the divine within us, all of those things. So that information uh, was really transmitted to us the first time, transmitted to us through the, the first big civilization, which is the civilization of Mu and Lemuria. So that is within our DNA as well, which means that all of those teachings is within our DNA, should we wish to remember them, we can, because DNA is, um, you can think of DNA as a, a humongous um, biological and multidimensional flash drive. It has limitless um, capacity to take in information. So there is no limit to uh, our capacity to hold information. And then there's also a layer within our DNA that gives us our Akashic record. Now, not just the Akashic record of this lifetimes of our parents, our lineage, but also the Akashic record throughout all of the lifetimes that we have had on earth. And also um, when we are not on earth as well, because there is a layer within our DNA, which is all about our soul. So the meaning that the soul, not just the soul that is limited to earth, but the total, like, kind of the totality of our soul, we have a record of that, that we can access should we desire to access that. And then also we have um, within those layers, we also have the, all the information of our soul families and also our angels and guides as well. Um, because we, are uh, really six dimensional beings um, living here, experiencing in the third dimension. So our, our soul is actually um, our highest vibration self is actually much higher vibration. So all of that is within our DNA. So that's why I says angels and guides, because believe it or not, we, the, a part of us is actually angelic. So all, all of what we think of as angels, archangels, all of those, we are also that as well. Not us when we are here on earth, but that the highest vibration version of us 
we, when we encounter them, we would call them angels or archangels, but they are just another part of us. So all of that is actually stored within our DNA. So that's, so that's how miraculous our DNA is. And within our DNA, of course, we are able to heal ourselves, our healing abilities. We, we actually have the ability to know what was wrong with us. Um, right now, we, like most of us, unless we are really good doctors or healers, we don't know what's going on inside our body. However, our DNA, there's a layer of our DNA, and I think um, Cryon called it innate, which is the part of us that knows what's wrong and also knows how to heal ourselves as well. And that's part of our DNA, and we have access to that if we want to access it. And we also have um, access to the, I can call that creator God, but God energy. So whatever name you want to give to the universal creator, you can call it God, you can call it whatever it is within your religion that has the name for the highest being, creator being. So that is also a part of our DNA as well. The energy within our DNA is, of, is from that source. And we have the ability to access all of creation, not just our own um, lineage, not just our own past life, not just the, the human collective, which is also within our DNA as well, because we, our, our DNA is, as a part of it, is really um, connected to Mother Earth. It's also connected to all of creation within our DNA. We actually can, we hold a placeholder to all of creation, everything that has ever been created and the creator itself. So within our DNA, all of that is there and we can access it. So how, how are we gonna access it? The thing about DNA and all of these, these miraculous things is that just like the, the, our ET brothers is not going to just you know, plop in front of the White House or um, in front of the um, residence of you know, Justin Trudeau. They're not gonna do that. We have to be ready. We have to actually ask. We have to give our permission. We have to give intent and really ask for that. And when we ask, and when we allow ourselves to receive those benefits, we will. So that is part of the, um, that is really part of the, um, the deal is that in terms of growing consciousness, in terms of growing our consciousness, or even just having a better life on earth, we have all the information that we will ever need within our DNA. And we have to talk to our body, ask, talk to our DNA, ask for these information, for these abilities to be activated, to activate them and also to make them available to us. And we also have to be open to receive um, because believe it or not, human beings have trouble receiving. 
we have trouble asking too. Um, I'm speaking from from my own experience. Um, a lot of people, you know, we don't even like to ask for directions, let alone ask for our DNA to give us all of these miraculous ideas, abilities, and access that we have within our DNA already there stored, waiting for us to start to look at it and receive it. So that's really circling back to what is the practical, what does it mean? What does it mean that we have all of these attributes from our DNA con um, ancestors? Whatever it is that they have achieved, it's stored in their DNA. And because we have their DNA, it's also stored in our DNA. And we have access to all of that. It is just that we don't even know that they exist. We don't even know that we have them as our, within our DNA. So now that we know, if you want to, that you need to really ask yourself, are you ready to receive the benefits? Are you ready to activate your own innate abilities to know what which part of your body is not functioning well and also to start to activate that internal healing ability because we definitely have it there's been many other um, spontaneous remission from very serious and and um, debilitating illnesses that happened so we know that it's if it has happened once it means that there is um there is a mechanism for that to happen it's just that most people don't know how to access it the way to access it is really to know that it is already within us and start to activate it within ourselves it does not mean that, oh, okay, I want um, healing from, you know, this pain in my, I don't know, left shoulder, let's say. <clears throat> it's, it's not that, you know, yes, I asked for that. How come I'm not receiving it yet? No. You have to communicate with your body, really feel your body, and really talk to your body. Talk to your body talk to your DNA, talk to that innate part of you that is connected to a consciousness that is much more profound that, than what we know or think is possible. You have to really surrender to that and start to talk to your body until you feel a response, until you feel a shift. And when you do that um, consistently, the more you do it, the more your body takes you seriously, the more you start to shift your own consciousness, the more you're convinced and therefore enable yourself to receive all of these different abilities that is already within yourself, within your DNA, passed to you with compassion, with nothing less than pure love from all of our DNA ancestors, from all of the star beings that have come to earth to, to leave the, the comfort of their own society, to come and live amongst you know, barbarians like us, to give us their DNA to, to birth a new civilization that we are beginning to take over and to nurture ourselves. 
So this is what's in our DNA and that is the most practical thing. It's already within us. They gave it to us through our DNA. And so that's all I want to um, talk about and share this evening. Um,